Greetings, First Presbyterian Church family. Hope this finds you well. I am speaking to you from the past. I'm actually recording this Thursday thought on Wednesday morning. Uh, and you'll be watching it on Thursday. So again, greetings from the past. You may hear some noise in the background. The trees that are next to the church, the, actually I should say the big tree that's right next to the uh, sanctuary is still there. However, some of the limbs have grown dangerously close to the roof of the sanctuary. And we've had enough roof problems over the last uh, couple of years and uh, other f repairs work to be done. And so the deacons, uh, with approval of the session, uh, the property committee specifically of the deacons with the approval of the session, is uh, getting this trimmed. There's some other limbs of the trees that are near the church that need to be trimmed. They can be done in-house. Uh, we have church folks who are very comfortable taking care of that job themselves. But the way, and I'm just looking out there even as I speak, the way that some of those branches actually touch the building and are so close to the building that you've got to have a professional to do this. So, again, if you hear any noise in the background, uh, that that's what it, it is about. Today we are looking once again to Galatians and just focusing on that. And I just wanted to just do a small piece today. Remember, again and again, Paul is talking about our freedom in Christ. It's not Christ and a work. Symbolically here would be the um, work of circumcision to say, you're not really a Christian, you have to become a Jew first or perform this work. And there's a lot of allegories, analogies that he gives. I mean, you can go very deep in Galatians, um, and maybe one time I will. But sharing just some highlights from that book, and here in the fifth chapter, he's concluded an analogy, which is a little complicated, uh, looking at Hagar and Sarah. Hagar was the lady's maid uh, for Sarah and um, served as a surrogate mother. And Ishmael came from her, but he was not the child of promise. And Paul gets a series of discussions there. The last verse says, So then, friends, we are children not of the slave, but of the free. And then verse 1 of uh, chapter 5, For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. We are free in Christ. Through, Christ, through the Spirit, by faith, we eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness. We have been made justified, and God is working in us, that process of sanctification, but me, we have been made right in God. So really key verses down here, verses five through, chapter 5, verses 13 through 15. For you are called to freedom, brothers and sisters. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence, but through love become slaves to one another. For the whole law is summed up in a single commandment, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. If, however, you bite and devour one another, take care that you are not consumed by one another. Now what follows are the works of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit, and you uh, may be familiar with that. We've actually got a window in the sanctuary that speaks to that, and I'm going to go there next week. I just want to focus on a few thoughts today uh, from this section uh, of Galatians. First is that reminder that we were called to freedom, but do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence, but through love become slaves to one another. Many years ago, I knew a young man, uh, I was even younger, a young man from Mercedes, Texas. That's down in South Texas. I, he could probably see Mexico from his house. And I had met in a collegiate student project and um, that was a verse I asked him to sign my Bible. And of several friends, there were several group of friends I asked to sign my Bible. And he used that verse 513. Uh, you are called to freedom, brothers and sisters, only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence, but through love become slaves to one another. That was the verse uh, that he wrote in there, which is not typical of what you find, but he's not a typical guy, cool guy. Great representative of the state of Texas, okay? He's just, just the coolest guy. But anyway, that's uh, the verse that he shared, and that's the point. We are free in Christ. And there's nothing we can do to earn more favor in terms of salvation. There are things that we can do that are pleasing unto the Lord, but our salvation is earned. But don't use this as a platform for uh, oneself, 
but have a ser heart of service for one another. Which again, if we all, I not put all of us in that, if we all followed a servant heart towards one another, many problems would be eliminated. That is the first part, to, to do that. And that's one of the great balancing acts of the Christian life. Jesus came full of grace and truth, we're told in John's Gospel. And a reminder that it's a mixture of both. He gave grace, but he also gave truth. To the woman caught in adultery, he said, go and sin no more. He said, I don't condemn you, but go and sin no more. It wasn't just, well, anyway, you, you know what I'm saying there. If we have grace without truth can lead to licentiousness. Oh, uh, just everybody just go hog wild or whatever. If we have truth without grace, that leads to legalism. And you don't want that either. Sometimes in society, I would say now we're, we're probably more concerned about being too legalistic uh, rather than being too licentious. We've got to err on one side. It's just the way of the flow. Earlier times, other times, it was up oh, better to be on the legalistic side than to be too far over into the, uh, the other, uh, other side there. But that's the balancing act. And a reminder again of how to use our freedom to serve and love one another in those acts of, of service. I've heard before somebody use uh, kind of freedom in Christ as an excuse to be focused on themselves. Or you might call somebody on, is that really the way you're treating another person good? Uh, does it build them up? Oh, you're being so judgmental. Uh, somebody says, quick to defend their own rights, and you're being legalistic. Uh, well, how are you treating somebody? Sometimes people, I use the term grace abuse, uh, use that as an excuse or a cover uh, to in continue to indulge in behaviors that do not build up. And he warns them there, says, if, however, you bite and devour one another, take care that you're not constantly consumed by one another. The old story of the gal was it the cal uh, gingham dog and the calico cat by next to each other. One morning they weren't there. I did. They had eaten each other in their, in their cat and dog battle. And that can happen. If we're focusing so much on ourselves, and I want my way at all the time, and lose sight of the other, we eventually end up turning on one another, and that's not a direction we want to go at all. You're called to freedom, and through love, serve one another. That's the thought I want to leave with you today. Uh, been a straight Bible commentary today. I uh, just want to leave you with that and then also leave you with a prayer. I'm going a slightly different direction. Uh, when I started this, uh, what's this, about 18 months ago? Gosh, 18 months ago. Uh, a little over 18 months ago. But um, I was remember using the, the Celtic Benediction, that book. I used it several times and have put it to the side. I wanted to pull it out again. I want to share with you a prayer of thanksgiving and intercession and then a closing prayer. This actually comes from the Monday night prayer. Uh, so it has sort of an evening theme to it. But again, whenever the point of the day that you're watching this, uh, I think these prompts work. Let us pray. For your spirit woven into the fabric of creation, for the eternal overlapping with time, and the life of earth interlaced with heaven's vitality, I give you thanks, O God. For your untamed creativity, your boundless mystery, and your passionate yearnings, planted deep in the soul of every human being, I give you thanks. Grant me the grace to reclaim these depths, to uncover this treasure, to liberate these longings, and in being set free in my own spirit, to act for the well-being of the world. At this point, a person is invited to recall the events of the day and pray for the life of the world. And if you wish to do so, you may pause and do that. Then let us close with this. O brother Jesus, who wept at the death of a friend and overturned tables in anger at wrong, let me not be frightened by the depths of passion. Rather, let me learn the love and anger and wild expanses of soul within me. These wild expanses that are true expressions of your grace and wisdom. And assure me again that in becoming more like you, I come closer to my true self, made in the image of outpouring love, born of the eternal, free God. Amen. Have a great day.